Let's go ahead and generate a deep research report, add it to a RAG database, and then chat with that report to get insights from it. So let me go ahead and demonstrate. Create a deep research report on the benefits of a high protein breakfast. And that's the workflow starting off. So first it's gonna look for uh, what areas to do deep research in according to this topic. Next it's going to generate an introduction and we're going to track all of that information in a Google Sheet uh, to pull back and compile into our report. Next up we are using a service called Tavily where we're first going to generate a list of sources then we are going to work with that Tavily response and um, write out all of the sections and we're using DeepSeek again for doing all of this. Once the response is processed, it's going to write out section 1, then section 2, then section 3, and it's going to add everything to the Google Sheet. Then we are going to write out uh, chapter 2 and chapter 3, which the process pretty much repeats itself. So let's go ahead and zoom out and just wait for this research report to finish generating. And once all of that's done, we read the sheet, we create an HTML file, we create a PDF, add everything to Telegram, and then upload everything to our Superbase vector store. If I open up Telegram again, I'll have a PDF report ready for me to start reading. Here's my report. So let me go ahead and open that up. So here's a beautifully formatted uh, PDF report complete with uh, chapters the sources from uh, where all the information from each chapter came from, plus a lot of in-depth information about the query that we, that we gave it. Now that all of that's done, we also have a nice conclusion, and uh, that is our report. Now where this AI agent becomes supercharged is that I've gone ahead and added this entire research report into my RAG agent, so I can now chat with this research report. So let's go back up here and see how the chatting works. I'm going to click execute again and let's go ahead and ask it. Should I have eggs or waffles for breakfast? And then it's going to hit this part of the, the retrieval area of the AI agent. It's going to pull information from the vector store and shoot us back an answer. So what this agent is doing is that it's taking the question that I asked it it's uh, using the RAG agent to pull whatever information is present. It's comparing both of those pieces of information, it's thinking about it, and then uh, sending back an answer. So this is an incredibly powerful automation and, and really building out an entire database and, and bank of well-researched information that you can retrieve on demand. If you're new here, my name is Shab. I build AI and automations to help small businesses and individuals become more efficient, save time, and save money. If you want this workflow, just drop a comment on this video and I'll be more than happy to share the workflow with you. And if you're looking to make your business more efficient through AI and automation, just go ahead and use the link in the description to book a discovery call with me. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and see how this AI automation works. I'm gonna go back into executions and find the, uh, the previous execution where uh, the earlier research report was generated. So it's pop over to executions and find this one. It took about five and a half minutes for this to execute. And while we're on the subject of time, um, we got a fairly detailed report in just five and a half minutes. If uh, we were to use say uh, OpenAI or Claude's deep research function, it would usually take much longer, at least 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and we would not have such a well-formatted response. And not only that, it would not be added automatically to the, um, to the RAG database for uh, recalling whenever you need to. So let's go ahead and walk through how this AI agent works. Now it starts with a Telegram trigger. I've set up a Telegram bot and you can set up a bot by going into Telegram, chatting with a user called the bot father and typing in slash new bot. And once you follow all these steps, you'll get an API key. Go ahead and copy that API key. Go come back into NADN create a new credential and paste that access token in here and give your credential a name so you can refer to it again later.
So now that the trigger is set up, I also want to add a filter. And what this filter is going to do is it's only going to uh, process messages that come from a particular user ID. In this case, mine. I don't want anybody else to message this bot and trigger this workflow. So I'm adding this step for security. Um, if you are doing a public workflow where you're allowing anybody to use it, then obviously you don't need this. But since this is something that I built for personal use, I'm going to keep that filter in. Next up, there's a switch node. This node is going to route messages either into the retrieval agent or into the research agent. So I've made two routing rules. One is if the message text contains deep research report, then it's going to trigger the, uh, the routing workflow and anything else is going to trigger the retrieval workflow. So this is just something that I've decided to use and it's, it's fairly simple. If I ever message Telegram and the message contains the words deep research report, that means it needs to generate a deep research report. Any other questions, it's going to go into the retrieval agent. So let's follow that route. So now um, that we're looking to generate a report, the first thing is it goes into an AI agent where the agent is going to identify deep research areas. So within that one topic, we are asking the agent to uh, generate three deep research areas, generate a title for each area, and a one paragraph description for uh, that explains why this sub area is important and why it's complex or nuanced and what kind of questions are typically explored within it. Now that uh, we have identified the deep research areas, we're going to use that information to generate um, a introduction for our paper. And we're just going to tell it to format the introduction using these HTML tags. And we're going to save that into Google Sheets. And the reason we're using HTML formatting is that's the easiest way to generate a nice looking PDF once the entire report is done. So that was the system prompt and the, the, the prompt that we're passing in is the entire output from the deep research areas um, AI agent. Now that the introduction is done, we save that to Google Sheets and then we fire off a Telegram message just acknowledging that um, we have started doing this research. Let me do some in-depth research on uh, whatever the topic was and get back to you shortly. And the chat ID is the original chat ID where the message originated from. Here we're going to split the three topics into three separate variables. So we have topic one, topic two, and topic three. Topic one and um, e each variable is an object with the topic number, the title, and the uh, supporting text. Because we're going to use these variables to, uh, to actually do the research. Now from here, we're going to run the same pattern three times. We want to generate three chapters uh, and the basic mechanism for generating each chapter is the same. So first we're going to drag a line out and make an HTTP request to a service called Tavily. Tavily is a really powerful web search API. Tavily has a very good free plan. So if you go into pricing, you'll see that you get a thousand API credits a month for free, which is incredible. This is going to, and this is going to cover most hobby usage for this particular workflow. And here is the documentation. Uh, this is the API call we're going to use. We're going to hit api.tabli.com slash search, pass in your authorization and bear token. And here is the data that we're actually sending. Here's the query. Uh, the topic is, it's a general topic. We, um, we can provide the search depth as well. And uh, we can also uh, change the max result. So let's go ahead and see the parameters that we've set here. So in the uh, body, we want uh, three max results and we're specifying that the search depth should be advanced. And we're passing in the title that we generated earlier. So this API call is going to return uh, the query, a short answer, as well as very detailed results. And the results will also have uh, content. Um, so sometimes the content is fairly short. Uh, in other times, the content is going to be much longer as well. But uh, as you can see from this first response there, the, uh, the content was fairly short, but this is really going to depend upon, uh, you know, the query and the depth of information that it actually, that it, that it actually returns. Next, we're just going to prettify the sources that we got from all of these, which is the URL and the title, the URL and the title of each source for this information. Um, and we're going to output it uh, uh, 
really nicely as HTML and a list. Now that we've generated the sources list, we add that back to our Google Sheet. And then we split the tabular response into three parts. So all we're doing here is we're grabbing this entire results array and we're asking it to output everything as a JSON object and add a serial number for each one. Now I'm using an LLM chain here, but you can also use a code node if you want to save, um, a, if you want to save on a couple of credits. And the resulting output is going to be topic number, topic, content, topic number, topic, and content. Perfect. So now that the tabular response is done, we're going to write out section one, where we're going to pass in uh, this topic and the content. Then we're going to write out section two, pass in this topic and the uh, content. And for every section, we're also passing in the um, the topic and content for other for the other sections. And this is really important because we don't want the um, we don't want the LLM to repeat itself unnecessarily. So every section should have unique content as much as possible. And that's why we're giving it a reference to uh, what's been said earlier and what's going to be said later. And there's also a system prompt where uh, we're just giving it some formatting and writing instructions. Now that section two is done, it's going to write out section three, same thing. And once the uh, once section three is written out, it's going to save everything to our Google Sheet. Next up, it's going to do chapter two, where again, it's going to generate the sources, um, save the sources to a Google Sheet, and then grab the tabular response, split it, write out section four, write out section five, and write out section six, and save that to a Google Sheet. Then go back down. Uh, this is now chapter three. Generate sources. Split the response. Write out section. Uh, write out the sections. One, two, and three. I messed up the numbers here. Uh, save all of that to a Google Sheet. And finally, once all of that's done, it's also going to write a conclusion for this structured research paper. So in order to write the conclusion, we are giving it a high-level overview of the content, which was everything that we returned from Tavoli. It, giving it all of that, we're also giving it uh, the title of the paper, and we're asking it to write a conclusion and format that conclusion with uh, some nice HTML. And once the conclusion is done, it's going to save all of that to a Google Sheet. Also, as it's going to, say, and once the conclusion is done, it's going to save that to our Google Sheet. Now, once all three of these chains are done, we're going to use a merge node, and that merge node is going to combine all of those outputs into a single chain. Now the reason the merge node is so powerful is that the merge node is going to wait for all three inputs to reach it before moving on to the next stage. So once all three inputs, all three chapters are done, we're going to hit the merge node. Then uh, we're going to aggregate those three items into one item. And then we're going to go back to the Google Sheet and just pull that one row uh, in which we have saved all of our content. Once we fold out all the content, we're going to use the HTML node to combine all of this information into a beautiful HTML template. And then we're going to use a service called PDF Shift to turn that HTML into a PDF file. Now, uh, if we go into their pricing, their free, the free plan has 50 credits a month. So with, with the free plan, you can generate up to 50 reports every month which um, I think is more than enough for most use cases. And that API request is going to return a PDF file. That PDF file is then sent to Telegram, and Telegram will send that file back to us. And once we receive the file, it's going to go back to Google Sheets and just delete that row so our Google Sheet doesn't end up getting too messy. Next, we're going to grab that file again. We're going to extract all of the text from that file, and then feed all of that into our Superbase vector store. Now the way to set up Superbase is you're going to add this Superbase vector store node and you need to create your uh, Superbase credentials. You need to grab the URL of your Superbase project and you're, you also need to grab the service role secret. So let's go into Superbase and I'll show you where to find that. I'm in Superbase right now. I've already got my project created, but if you don't have one, you would go into new project, set everything up. So let me go into here. So this is my project, and here is the project URL. I'm going to copy that and paste that into the host. And then if you go into Project Settings, API Keys, click Reveal over here, 
copy this and paste that in here and then just make sure that your connection is working. So what this is going to do is this is just going to hook up Superbase to, to N8N but we also need to create the vector store documents table. Now in order to do that N8N has some uh, fairly detailed documentation and Superbase also provides a script that you can just run in your Superbase project. So this is the script over here. I'll add these URLs in the description of the video. So all you need to do is grab this code, copy it, go back into Superbase and go into the SQL editor. And I've already got this over here, so I'm just going to highlight everything. Just go ahead and paste the code that you grabbed and run this query. And once you run this query, you will see that in your table editor, you will have a new table called documents ready to go to be used as a vector store. With all of that set up, you need to attach an embeddings model. So I'm using uh, OpenAI embeddings and just stick to text embedding three small, which is good for most use cases. You will also need to add a default data loader. And here you'll need to specify what data you are sending to the vector store. So here it's json.text, which is from the earlier uh, read PDF node. That's all that we're sending in. Otherwise, we're going to send in all of this information as well, which we don't want. And finally, you need to add a character text splitter as well. And just use the recursive character text splitter because this is the um, th this is the default for most use cases. So that's the entire document generation flow. Now let's go back up here and see uh, the retrieval flow. The retrieval flow. So if we d if we did not specify that we want a deep research report, um, the Telegram message is then going to go down the fallback route and into an AI agent. Now with this AI agent, I've provided a prompt. You are a helpful assistant. Use the Superbase tool to find the information about my query, retrieve that information, and use it to answer my question. And these instructions are really important. Extrapolate and infer where needed. Um, and if you don't retrieve a suitable response, just acknowledge that this information is not available. So the reason we're telling the AI agent to extrapolate and infer if you don't give these instructions, it will literally look for the exact same words of your query in the database. And if it doesn't find it, it's not going to give you a satisfactory answer. So if our research report was only about high protein breakfasts and we, uh, we ask it about eggs and there's no direct mention of eggs anywhere in the research report, it's not going to be able to figure that out. And even if there is a mention of eggs, if you ask it about omelets, it's not going to directly make that connection unless and until um, you give it those specific instructions. And we're also giving it some examples of extrapolation and inference. And giving examples is one of the best ways to make sure that the language model performs as expected. So once that's done, we're just going to attach a Superbase Vector Store tool and uh, that vector store is pointing to the documents table. Make sure that the table name here is also documents. And the description is retrieve data from Superbase vector store. And we're also going to need to attach an embeddings model. And just make sure that the embedding you choose here is the same as the one that you chose when uploading the data into, uh, into your vector store. So there it is, a super powerful workflow to generate PDF reports add it to a RAG database and retrieve that information on demand all through a Telegram bot. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more on AI and automation.